Welcome back as we continue our New Year's conversation with Debbie Dingle, Sandy Barua, Nolan Fenley, and Stephen Henderson. And Stephen, uh, let me, uh, let, let's stay with the vaccine issue here and what we do about the fact that uh, some of the communities that have been hit hardest, uh, most devastatingly by this virus are the ones who still remain most suspect of the lifeboats here when it comes to the vaccine. Well, that's about the history of this country and the experimentation that happened uh, on African Americans and other vulnerable populations. So, how do, how do we fix that? It's got to be about messaging, right? Uh, you, you have to have really powerful, credible messaging about the importance of this vaccine, the safety of this vaccine, uh, and the fact that this vaccine is going to stop. The, the carnage that uh, we have experienced in communities like Detroit. And it's also about the messengers, uh, you know, uh, getting people in our communities, people who are trusted by people in our communities uh, to get out and show that uh, they're supporting the vaccine, that they're taking the vaccine, and that they want others to take the vaccine is the way to, to, to mitigate that. But, but let's also not fool ourselves. I mean, we're talking about uh, centuries of history mm -hmm. uh, that's behind uh, this, sus this suspicion that people of color have of the medical establishment of government uh, and all of these things and we're not gonna we're not gonna overcome that uh, because of the of the vaccine we are not going to beat that uh, here what we can do is reduce the impact of it uh, through that, that, that messaging that, that I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sandy, uh, to Nolan's point about none of, uh, of our, uh, the five of us here, man, maybe Congresswoman Dingell does have a, uh, has been told when she might be able to get one. I, I have really no outlook as to when I might be able to get the vaccine. Uh, Sandy, I'm assuming you don't either. Well, actually, I have a little bit better idea because I'm a kidney transplant patient. Oh, you're right. I'm a high-risk yes. individual. I'm, I'm actually probably next in line after Debbie gets hers. So, Debbie, once you get yours, I'll get mine. So you <laughs> Debbie, you better get yours before me. <laughs> you, 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 you lead the way. But, uh, Debbie, let me say this real quickly about, you know, first of all, what Nolan said before the break. Uh, you know, what we're seeing uh, is a last-mile issue with the vaccine distribution. Again, you know, the vaccines are being distributed. They're being manufactured. You know, yes, we have uh, supply issues that Debbie brought up regarding needles and such. That should have been taken care of in advance. But clearly, we're seeing once we get it into hospitals and local pharmacies in terms of getting it distributed, you know, that's an issue. And to Stephen's point, uh, our last statewide poll, which was right before Thanksgiving, right. Uh, which we did with the Glenn Gariff Group, shows that about 50 percent of African Americans in Michigan are willing to take the vaccine, uh, maybe not on day one, but relatively soon. And I think that's a good place to start. So I think that we've got a good basis to get our kind of at-risk population, especially our African-American community, vaccinated if we start with that 50 percent, and as Stephen said, strong messaging built yeah. from there. Congresswoman, I want to yeah, comment in. on this, Devin. I am one of the people that's afraid. I could have had the vaccine by now if I had wanted it because of continuity of government. And I, I'm going to admit to people that uh, I was having panic attacks two weeks ago when some of my colleagues started to get it. I am educating myself. I'm talking to doctors, but I'm also not stupid. I have got to build up my confidence and I have to get this vaccine. We are not going to get out of this. We are not going to return our country to normal until we all do. So I will ultimately get this when I get the courage, and I hope I'm able to bring other people along with me as we study it. We learn that it's safe. Uh, but it's not just uh, people of color that are afraid of this. There are chicken people like me, but we also have to be smart. And I think we just have to learn and acknowledge we're scared, and we're going to have to do it, or our lives aren't going to get back to normal. That, that, that's really honest, Debbie. I, I, I appreciate the candor on that. And Stephen, that's exactly the kind of thing you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, and, and for someone like uh, Debbie to come out and say, hey, I, I am afraid of this, but I am going to do it. And to show that she's going to do it is part of what that messaging has to look like for, for other people who have, uh, who have real reluctance uh, about this. And, and uh, the, the truth is that we don't have a choice uh, with that, we have got to get to that 70 percent number yeah. uh, for things to get uh, back to normal. And now we're right now, even if we put everybody uh, to, to their best purposes uh, right now, it's late summer or fall yeah. before we get to that that number. Uh, that's just uh, that's just forever.
I, I want to get to two quick political matters before we have to get to a break. Nolan, who is going to be the leader? Where is the leadership of the Republican Party right now, and who will be in 2021? Donald Trump. I don't see in any exile, sign. In exile, in effect. I don't see any sign that the GOP is going to let go of Donald Trump. I would expect the 2024 uh, Donald Trump campaign to start on Inauguration Day. I have never in my life seen a politician with a greater hold on a party than Donald Trump has on Republicans. There is a intense loyalty. Um, I didn't, you, you, you can't even, you didn't even see that with a Barack Obama. You didn't see it with a Ronald Reagan. This, this man has a tremendous hold on this party. And I think uh, for better or worse for Republicans, he is going to be the leader of this party uh, at least for the next year or so, and maybe for the next four. Uh, Sandy, I got about 20 seconds. Is that for better or for worse? Uh, uh, well, in my opinion, it's, it's for worse because I'm part of the old line Republican Party. I'm what I call a refugee Republican. I'm going to agree 100 percent with what Nolan said. I think what we are going to see, though, uh, Devin, is that I think this, you know, this movement of disaffected Republicans, people who started like the Lincoln Project, I think you're going to see a more formal effort to start something anew that is a home for people like me who are old line uh, Reagan Bush Democrat uh, Republicans. And lastly, Stephen, 15 seconds. What do we expect of the Detroit mayor's race this year? Quickly. Uh, as always, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it, could, it could be anything. <laughs> it should be interesting, though, right? Uh, uh, we don't even know who the candidates are yet. No doubt about it. Gang, thank you all so much for the time. Happy New Year to one and all. Happy and New hopefully we'll see you all in person real soon. Happy New Year, all. Yep, you bet. Back Happy with New more Year. Goodbye, minute. 2020. <laughs> Flashpoint. Don't go away. <laughs>